Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Hope you're enjoying FOSDEM. Sorry about the delay. Uh, I had trouble getting a taxi, then got very lost, and then the equipment did not cooperate. Um, so I'm here to tell you about .NET on the web with WebAssembly. Uh, my name is Michaela Hutchinson. I work at Microsoft on the Mono and uh, Visual Studio for Mac and Xamarin teams. And you can see my email address and Twitter handle there. If you have any questions for me, feel free to send me those questions. So how many people here know what uh, WebAssembly is? Okay, so not everyone. Good, because I prepared uh, an explanation for you. So it's essentially a bytecode for the web. So you can compile programming languages down to this bytecode and run them in your web browser. It, um, it's a stack-based machine, very much like .NET. It's kind of the equivalent of .NET IL. Um, so you can run this in the web browser. You can also run it on Node.js. Um, so you can run the exact same thing on the front end and back end. So this is really interesting because it allows you to use your language of choice for programming in the web browser, um, which previously you, could, you couldn't do. You had to use JavaScript um, or transpile to JavaScript, which gets complicated. Um, there was a precursor of, we of WebAssembly called ASM.js. Um, this is a refined um, and more standardized version of, of that. It also is really interesting because it allows you to reuse existing libraries. So if you have existing code that's written in C or C++ or, or, or so on, you can compile that to WebAssembly and now run that in your browser. Or you can run it in your browser and then use it from JavaScript. So this is kind of what it looks like. So if you have some C++ like that, um, or that could be C quite, quite easily, it compiles into a um, machine code. There's a, a nice opcodes there. And this is the textual representation of those. So as you can see, it's very much a, an assembly language. You could actually write this if you wanted to. Um, there's a slightly higher level kind of S expression based um, version, which is syntactic sugar to make it easier to write the, as the assembly. So Web the WebAssembly initiative was started in 2015, um, and the, um, the community group that devel developed it, they standardized their MVP, their minimal, their minimum viable product in 2017. So it's available in all the major web browsers in Chrome, in Firefox, in Safari, in Edge, and of course all of the browsers that are derived from those, the, like cr Chromium and so on. Um, and this has actually been used to run some pretty big existing code, code bases, some pretty serious code. So people have got Unreal Engine running in this, like actual games running in the web browser, all C++, uh, the Unity game engine, the open source Godot game engine. Um, I believe they have a booth over here um, as, as well, if you want to check that out. And also AutoCAD and Figma. Um, Figma is a really nice uh, tool for des designing U UIs that we use a lot. And I was very surprised to find out that th this thing was all written in C++ running in the web browser. Um, and as I mentioned be before, it builds on, on ASM.js, which has actually been around since um, 2010. So this is how the compilation pipeline works. So you have your C or C++. Um, and that feeds into Clang, which, ge which generates L LVM IR. Then that goes into um, mscripten. Um, so mscripten has a back end for converting the LVM IR into WebAssembly or WASM. So this is kind of the standard mscripten tool chain that, ev that um, everyone uses for running C and C++ uh, in, in the web browser. So you might expect that um, with seeing as Mono has an LVM, an LVM backend, we could just swap out Clang for Mono and use the same pipeline for .NET IL. 
And of course, C sharp and F sharp and so on would produce your .NET IL um, or any other language like Boo, for example. Or it's not quite that simple. Um, Web assembly is running in a sandbox. It's a very constrained environment. Uh, you can't JIT compile, and JIT is kind of our default method of running code. Um, you don't have threads. Our garbage collector relies on threads. Our finalizers re re rely on threads, even if you're not using threads yourself. Um, you also don't have signals, which we typically rely on for catching um, null reference exceptions via the segfault, um, or the uh, garbage collector uses that for interrupting threads. Um, when it needs to garbage collect. So we had to do a lot of work to actually work around these limitations. Um, and I'll, I'll get into those in a little more depth uh, later. But um, yeah, the net result is that it mostly works. There are a bunch of limitations, um, and it is getting better. So the way that we run code in this non-JIT environment is, first of all, we have the mono interpreter. Um, now, mon mono had, a, had an interpreter um, back when it was started um, almost 20 years ago called Mint um, that was deprecated. And it was only a, cu a couple years ago that we resurrected it because this enabled us to run dynamic code on languages that don't allow JIT compilation. Um, like um, the iPhone or games consoles um, or the Apple Watch and so on. Um, and the interpreter has the advantage that it's really easy to get running on any new platform. But it, it is slower to execute your code, of course. Um, and, but it does have the advantages that the code is smaller. Um, IL is pretty compact compared to the generated uh, native code. Um, and it's also fast to compile because you don't have to do anything else to your IL. You just run your, uh, your IL directly. Um, another, another technology we have is ahead of time compilation, where we essentially pre compile everything that the JIT would compile into a native binary. Um, and that still needs to run time for garbage collection, reflection, stuff like that, but it's, it's essentially a native, a native binary. So that results in much faster code because we can run that through. Uh, LVM, for example, and get all of the amazing optimizations that LVM performs. Uh, it's slower to compile. LVM is very slow to compile compared to um, the C-sharp compiler, for, for, for example. And the generator code is bigger. So we also have this hybrid mode um, or mixed mode where you can combine the two. So you can use A AOT for some of your code, like the, cl the class libraries or really hot, hot methods and so on. And then you can use the inter interpreter for stuff that isn't used um, as frequently. So that essentially lets us pick the trade-offs to get the best, the, the best of both worlds. So given your, that you're running in the browser, you don't have access to syscalls and like all of those things that, that, that your libraries typically build on top of. So um, you have to do everything through calling into JavaScript, and then JavaScript calls into the APIs that, ja that JavaScript has access to. So you essentially need a bridge layer. So we have our runtime.invoke.js, and that returns JS objects, which have an invoke method, and so on. But it's all very kind of, it's like reflecting all, almost. You have to get these little JavaScript strings, emit them. You get back a kind of object that you have to ask it for its properties and stuff like that. It's not very friendly to program against. Um, and the same thing is true on the JavaScript side. Uh, it's very much you're using the mono embedding a APIs to like load a method handle and construct objects and invoke it and so on. So. So to make this easier to use, um, we are currently building something called the binding ge generator. Um, I don't have anything just to show off just, just yet. Um, but so one of the problems is that ju in JavaScript, the type system is it's, it's loosely typed and it's dynamically typed. And that doesn't map well to C sharp, which is, which is pretty st strongly typed and is statically typed um, because you won't get in 
IntelliSense, the compiler can't compile against methods that it doesn't even know are there because they're only added at runtime and stuff like that. Or when it returns an, an object, the C-sharp C -sharp needs to know what type that object is. It can't come back as, as multiple different types um, that look the same and therefore you can use them the, sa the same way like you can in JavaScript. <laughs> Um, however, in practice, most APIs are not. Most APIs, like the browser DOM and so on, are st static. They always look the same, um, and they always return the same types. So there's this great resource. Um, so TypeScript, uh, which compiles down to JavaScript but is strongly typed, um, has a repository of um, a repository of definitions at definitelytyped.org, which is essentially defines in a statically typed, strongly typed way what these APIs look like. So what we are doing is we are using those definitions to generate C sharp wrappers into these same APIs. So um, how do you get started with with, with this? Uh, well, of course you can check out um, the Git repo re repository. Um, it's all up on G GitHub. Um, that commit there was literally last, last night. You can watch development as it's happening. Um, and you can compile it from source. Uh, but, you know, not, not, not everyone wants to start from bare bones. So there are some higher level platforms that do a lot of the kind of low level stuff for you so you don't have to deal with with those low level de details. So the biggest and most well known is Blazor which is being developed by Microsoft. It's still very much a kind of it's not kind of officially going to be sta stable for sure. It's kind of a prototype but it's it's very mature for a prototype, very usable. Um, it's, so it's essentially a full stack frame, framework that's very like um, React. Um, so if you want to write your single page applications running in the browser, you can write those in C Sharp and have a very React-like component model and so on. Um, and you can choose how those are split between the client and the server and the client and the server using all C Sharp. And the back end is ASP.NET Core. Um, another really interesting one is, is uh, UNO. Now this is um, an open source cross-platform re-implementation of the Windows UWP UI frame, fr framework that, um, that runs on iPhone and Android and so on, but it also runs on WebAssembly in the browser. So that's really interesting because you can run you, 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 you can write a C-sharp app that runs across mo mobile and in the browser client. Um, another uh, in, in, interesting one to check out is uh, UI, op object-oriented UI t toolkit. It's, um, it's, it's, um, it's a very easy to use UI toolkit that maps down directly to H H HTML elements, so if you want to do things in kind of a more web-like way, that's a great toolkit to use. Um, and <laughs> one, I, one I find particularly um, interesting is uh, WASM WinForms. Um, so a developer um, uh, just um, as a side project decided to take Mono's Windows Forms stack and run that in the web browser. So he compiled X Windows and FreeType and Cairo and LibGDI Plus and all that stuff and managed to get Mono's WinForms implementation running completely client side in the web browser, which is kind of amazing. Um, so, uh, I have about five minutes left. I am going to show you a quick demo. So, uh, nope. Uh, parent, that's on. Okay. So, um, so, I have my web browser open at a cup. Uh, no, not that. <laughs> okay, um, so this is Uno. So this is actually XAML um, that is rendering into HTML completely on the client. 
Um, you can play around with all the different controls they have here. But um, you can see it's you can see it's um, real. Like if I change the red to green, for example, and then run, it reloads. Takes a little. Um, yep, and now we have two two green um, squares. And of course, this has all of the thing. Oh, no. Oh, I don't have Wi-Fi uh, right now. So this is actually you. You know for sure this is running in the client. Um, for those of you that don't know, uh, Uno is a, is a clone of the Windows 10 API. So when Windows launched, they introduced a new graphics UI. Uh, and these folks in Canada went and cloned all of the Windows API and, and put it on mobile, on Android, and iOS, and now on the web. So if you can build a Windows 10 API, one of those modern APIs, in effect, you can run on the web now. Uh, yeah, thank you for that. Um, uh, yeah, so um, this is UI. So um, this is one of its this also running in WebAssembly. As as you can see, it's uh, it's served up from S3, so completely static. Um, and this is also um, a dem a demo that um, that does convert um, that is that is live again. Um, uh, and so this is a so this is converting um, Xamarin Forms XAML into UI elements. So these are all just divs and stuff. And this is um, <laughs> Wasm <laughs> running Windows Forms, um, which is um, which is actually um, completely functional. If well, I appear to have lost mouse input, but it is yeah. I've I've tried it. It's completely functional, which is. Amazing. Yeah, amazing. Um, Let's go back to it. So yeah, so back to the slides. Um, yeah, so uh, if you want to learn more about these, uh, we have these. Uh, here's some re some resources. The slides will be up uh, on online, so you don't have to write these down right right now. And uh, yeah, thank you for coming to my talk. Um, please remember to fill out your session evaluations. And again, if you have questions, that's how you can contact me.